For starters, this is not a paid or sponsored review. I recently did an overview of the 3080 Razorblade 14 and wanted to see how the 3070 also performed, as it comes in around $600 cheaper. You can find a link to that video linked at the top of the screen now. The specs on this laptop include a Ryzen 9 5900HX processor, a 14-inch QHD monitor with 165Hz refresh, a GeForce RTX 3070 with 8GB of VRAM, a 1TB SSD, and 16GB of unfortunately soldered RAM. There's also a per-key RGB Razer Chrome key keyboard. When I first did the review of the 3080, I was a little disappointed in how it performed overall for the price, so let's see how this 3070 holds up. The exterior of this laptop looks and feels great. It's compact and solid. A CNC aluminum frame that only comes in anodized black, with a nice touch of a backlit Razer logo. It has precision glass touchpad and a per-key RGB keyboard. Be prepared for fingerprints. Accompanying the laptop is a 230 watt power adapter. For I.O., on the right side of the laptop are a USB 3.2 Type-C with a DisplayPort 1.4, a USB Type-A, an HDMI 2.1 output, and a Kensington lock. On the left side is an audio jack, another USB 3.2 Type-C port, another USB Type-A port, and the power port. The power cable when plugged in faces towards the back of the laptop, but rests on the side out of the way. The laptop measures 12.5 inches or 317.5 millimeters wide by 8.5 inches or 216 millimeters long. When open, the laptop is 9 inches or 228.5 millimeters tall. When closed, the laptop sits at just 0.66 inches or 16.8 millimeters. It weighs 1.75 kilograms on its own and 2.49 kilograms including the power adapter, which is also the same as 3 pounds 14 ounces on its own, or 5 pounds 8 ounces with the power adapter. There is a 1 megapixel camera built into the top of the display. This is recorded on the integrated webcam and the integrated microphone. This is the bottom of the laptop. There are rubber feet to help keep the laptop slightly lifted from the ground for better airflow. Two 88 blade fans handle the cooling. I won't be opening this laptop up, but the inside basically has the SSD and a closer look at these fans. They pull cold air into a vapor chamber that then expels hot air out the back. The keyboard is supported by a sturdy metal frame, but the keys mostly feel squishy when you press them. I know it's a lot to ask, but I do wish Razer put maybe a mechanical keyboard in this or keys that felt a little better when you press them. And maybe I just wasn't used to it, but I also kept running into issues misclicking with the touchpad. I don't know what it had to do with it. Uh, the glass feels fine, but I somehow just kept misclicking. The same complaint I had with the 3080 version I still have here. Some of the keys are only half illuminated. This is one of my favorite features though. Watch how the keys change at different moments as I play Apex. This was enabled by default and adds a really cool feeling to the game. The speakers leave a lot to be desired, which should be expected from a laptop this size. At higher volume scenes, they tend to pop, and are mostly drowned out by the cooling fans when gaming. You'll almost definitely need a headset when playing on this. For the following tests, I have the CPU set on boost and the GPU set on high, as well as 165Hz refresh and 1440p. Geekbench gave the processor 1421 single core and 7289 multi-core. Cinebench release 20 came in at 5239. Cinebench 23 hit 13066 multi and 1432 single core. This 3070 GPU has a maximum graphics power of 100 watts and has 8 gigabytes of VRAM. A Unigen test had just 135.5 FPS and a score of 3414. When trying it again at 1080p and 60Hz, the FPS jumped to 260 and a score of 6561. Running a TimeSpy benchmark at 1440p, 165Hz had a graphics score of 9523. Here are the max temps recorded during this benchmark. The same test when using the USB-C display port out to an external monitor with this laptop display disabled increased the graphics score to 9889. 
An interesting thing here is while the CPU temps stayed about the same, the GPU temps came in nearly 20 points cooler. A 1440p test in Firestrike came in with a graphics score of 22502. Here are the temperature peaks for this test. On an external monitor, the graphics score had a roughly 10% increase to 24,569. CPU temps again stayed nearly the same, while GPU temps dropped 16 points. Geekbench gave a pretty good CUDA score of 121,939. Shadow of the Tomb Raider at highest settings had an average FPS of 79, with a min of 68, and a max of 132 for the GPU. The lowest settings had an average FPS of 98 with a min of 145 and a max of 253 for the GPU. While on an external display at the highest setting, an average FPS jumped to 96 with a min of 98 and a max of 226 for the GPU. Lowest settings had an average FPS of 107 and a min of 202 with a max of 390 for the GPU. Here's a better visual of the difference an external display made with these tests comparing 1080 at 60Hz versus 1440 at 165Hz. Gears of War 5 at max settings had an average GPU FPS of 68.2, CPU game FPS of 147, and CPU render FPS of 123. On an external display, the GPU FPS was 77.8, CPU game FPS of 199, and CPU render FPS of 156. Here's a better visual of this difference as well, showing a 10-25% to bump in FPS. Benchmarks aside, putting actual game playing to the test, this laptop really does a good job. The response time feels great, and rendering, animation, and lighting on the screen also feels great. The fans are so loud though, you seriously have to wear headphones. And attempting to play online in a group or over the speakers and mic is nearly impossible. Fast-paced shooters feel really good on this machine, with Apex holding around 80 to 100 FPS steadily throughout the several back-to-back -back games. The bright screen you see here was also recorded in broad daylight, so the screen holds lights and visuals really well. The external temperatures captured during benchmarking were about what you'd expect. But check out the temperatures recorded after several hours of gaming. Overall, the picture on this laptop looks good, and it's powerful enough to play graphics-intense games with high settings, even if the numbers are slightly less than the sum of its parts should output. With its small size and lightweight, this would make a decent travel gaming laptop. Just plan on melting your lap if you play it for too long. However, I think the true power of this laptop shines when hooked up to an external monitor. While playing on the 165Hz 1440 screen, I feel that 8GB of VRAM is getting encumbered, and begins to sacrifice performance. While playing in 1080p, it showed ridiculously better results. I understand why many other laptop makers are pushing out FHD screens with higher refresh rates. And even though this is a decent laptop, at this price range, I still feel like you can get more bang for your buck on a 15-inch laptop, with nearly identical specs. Still though, if your heart is set on a 14-inch screen, this is probably the one to get. Well, that's really all there is for this overview and first thoughts. If you liked this video, please do subscribe as it will help me get more videos pushed out in the future. Also, check back soon for a direct face-off between the Razer Blade 14 30 70 and 3080 to see which one I'd say is more worth the purchase. Thanks for watching, everyone, and take care.